Hello and welcome to another instructional video. This one's not going to be on QImage, but rather the results of QImage. Since QImage can now easily print multi-panel prints, I have a multi-panel print here that I'm going to start cutting in my rotor trim cutter. And as you can see, it's just two 5x7 panels, just to give an example of uh, how to do the cutting and the placing the panels together, just to give a few tips there. Um, so what I'm going to do in the cutter here, what I found best is to turn the sheet over so that you're looking at the back side and then slip it into the guide. And then I take a flashlight and look through the sheet on the bottom. And you can see when you put the flashlight just right, you can see when the print starts to emerge at the cutting board. So let me zoom in a little bit on that. And as I move the page with the flashlight underneath the page near the cutting board, I can slide this print up until I see just a little sliver. You can see there on the corner, you can see that uh, there's about, I would say that's oh, close to a 64th of an inch. Um, that's hanging over and if you want to test it again you can tap the page in and then just bring it back a little bit and now go to the other side and make sure that you have an even line it looks like it's a little bit more on on this edge here let me back out now so you can see better it looks like it's a, a little bit more on this edge than on this edge so on my Canon printer it comes out tiny bit crooked so you can cheat a little bit and and just tap the side until it looks even. So you've got a little sliver of the print showing through like that that's just beyond the cutting board. You can see it overlapping the cutting board. And that's pretty close to 30 seconds to 64th of an inch all the way across now that I've just turned the sheet just a tiny bit to get it even all the way across. And if you have to do that, I would do it, and I'll show you why. Because now, when I cut, I've cut now one edge and now I can turn the sheet like this and if I use the guide right here to line up the edge that I just cut then the next edge will be even straighter because I just cut that one straight to the print so now I want to get this edge and I'll just go through this again if I hold my flash out under here I can see there's a lot of the print that's overlapping see there are the two prints there you can see them behind that so I'm going to move it back just a little bit until I get only a tiny sliver. You can see right here, only a tiny sliver is hanging over where the edge of the cutting board is. And on this side, looks the same. So now I know if I make a cut, it's going to cut just a tiny bit off. Let me pick up that piece off the floor. You can see right here, hopefully you can see, um, that there's... A tiny little bit of the print that's cut off and that's got to be like a 64th of an inch it's a very small piece but you don't want any white space like if you look at the print that I just cut you don't see any white space here along the edge of the print and you don't want that because you're going to be putting these panels together and if white space shows you'll see a white line across your multi-panel print so now I've got to cut this edge here and I'm just going to continue Hang on. Let's get this in here. Now I just have to cut the white space off of the two 5 by 7s So I'll do that now in the same way. So with doing it this way, when I run this cutter, rotary cutter across the page like this, the cutting wheel is 
right against the printed part of the print and the cutting board. So I find that that cuts it cleaner. And I've also found, at least for me, glossy panels. Let's see, I, I have both of my evenly cut panels with no white borders on the edge. Um, I find that the glossy, what I was saying, I find that the glossy panels go together more seamlessly and the seams seem to disappear more easily with glossy than they do on semi-gloss or luster or other paper types. I'm not sure why that is, but for right now, uh, that's what I've found. So now let's go in the other room and, and put these together. I'll show you some tips on that. Okay, I'm now in the other room. I actually have these laid out on my pool table because I find that it's really easy to slip the prints around, nice smooth surface, but you can do this on any flat surface, glass table, wooden table, just make sure that it's flat. Um, so what I like to do is, you know, we only have a two panel poster here, so um, I'll just show you what I do. I like to line the pieces up, and if I have like a four by two or a three by three, I'll line up all the panels first and make sure it looks good, and then I'll flip them over like this, keeping them oriented so, so I won't mess things up um, like this. Now, I'm going to show you what I do. The important thing here is to line everything up and make sure that it's pressed together. You don't want it like this. You see that little tiny gap right there? You want to press it together as you're putting it together. Um, so you want it to be flat. You kind of hold it down with your fingers like that. If you have more panels down here on the bottom, like if this is your top row, what you want to make sure is you want to line these edges up here so they're exactly even. Because when you're cutting these, there might be a tiny, tiny bit of a difference between the, the height of these. So if you line the top up, I'm going to exaggerate this to show you. If you line the top up instead of the bottom, you can end up with a, a case where these pieces right here don't quite line up. And if you have more more panels going down here on the bottom, um, obviously you're going to have a problem because now you have a panel that goes here and one that goes there and they're not going to line up. So long story short, just line up the inside edge where you know you have more panels. And see, that's, that's perfectly aligned right there. You can't see any difference. So what I'm going to do is I'll take a piece of my tape here, just a, a little piece, of, like like that, if you can see that. And I'm gonna hold this together with my fingers and press down and make sure that the two are butted up against each other. And while holding them together like this, you see I'm pressing in here and pressing in there, I'm, I'm holding them together and I'll put this piece of tape right there. Just make sure that there are no wrinkles over the line because that could make the tape not be tight. And on most panels like this, I like to put three pieces of tape, one here, and then I'll do like this again, run your finger along it while you're pressing in like this. That's what I'm doing. I'm pressing in with this finger, pressing in with this finger. Make sure that this is perfectly aligned like that, then put one in the middle while you're holding it tight. Doesn't matter if there's a little bit of a wrinkle on the edge because you just wanna make sure that the center is good. One final piece up top. Again, move your finger all the way up while holding these pieces together like this. Once you get up to the top, put this last piece right there straight. Uh, now, once you've got it tacked together like that, and if I had bigger sheets like 13 by 19, I might put, you know, four instead of three. But what I like to do here is, since you've got pieces pretty much on the edge anyway, is just bring the tape out like this and get it pretty close to as long as the line that you're trying to cover up here, the gap, or not the gap, but the seam. And now take the tape and put it down like this and move it over so that the, the line appears in the middle. And now place it down. And the way I like to do it is place it down on one edge first, and then I'm not pulling on the tape. Keep it kind of loose, and then just lay it down like that. And then go like that. What that does is if you, if you pull on the tape and then put it down, it can contract and um, pull the thing up like that. But now if we turn this over, you can see there's no seam in that visible whatsoever. Um, sometimes you, 
sometimes I take a microfiber cloth. I shouldn't be using my fingers, but this is just for the purpose of the video. Microfiber cloth and run it along this side. Because if I, if I eyeball it really close, I might be able to see a little bit of a seam right there. So I'll make sure that it's flat on this side as well. But um, that's how you do it. And just wanted to show you that. And if, if like I said, if you had a three by three or four by four or something like that, you're just gonna have more panels. It just, you would continue going, like do this row out, let's say it's four by two. So you do another one, another one. Then you come down here on this row and again, line it up at the corner here. The way this next panel would go on here is I would take this and line it up exactly right at the corner of this one print right here. This is a different type of paper, but again, just for the purpose of illustration, line it up like that. And then the next piece comes right in here and you make sure that you line up all four there. And this one, I would, I would do this and put a piece of tape there to tack it down. And then I would bring this other, this fourth sheet in here and lay it down. And while holding that one in, I'd put a piece of tape over all four and that keeps them all together. Now, if you do happen to have a little bit of a misalignment appearing, remember that the more accurately that you can cut your sheets and the roto trim will, will save you time here. Um, all of these are, you know, nearly exactly the same size. I mean, look at the top of this and the bottom. I, I cut them, you get used to it, you get to cut them at the same size. But the last point I want to make is if you have several rows this way, and you do develop a slight difference because the panels are cut just a tiny bit different. You may have one that has a little bit of a, an overlap like, like this. Look at this side here. A little bit of a difference there. The important thing in a case like this is bring the next panel in here and butt it up against this one and all the way over and then the next panel butts up against this so the priority here is to leave no gaps that's what we're looking for so you wouldn't want to if there's a little gap like this i don't have another sheet of paper with me but imagine if this little gap is here like this you don't want to do this and leave a tiny little gap so that it matches up with the bottom one go ahead and slide this in all the way so that you have full coverage even though it, it might be hanging over a little bit like this way or the other way and the next pieces you know no gap on those either so that's the way i've done it and it's worked well for me there have been other suggestions one of them that sounded good was a self-adhesive mounting board or poster board and that sounds like a great idea i have not tried that um, one reason is because it might be hard to find those uh, adhesive boards as big as i want to um, print these. I've been printing like 30 by 20s. Um, and even if it was easy, um, I like to just take these and, and mount them on the wall just, just like this with no you know, thickness behind them, no board behind it. But an adhesive board would be able to, you know, do a good job, I would think, because you would be mounting them face up on that like this, pushing them together. And as long as the boards would allow you to you know, peel up and redo it again if it's a little bit off. I don't know how much, how forgiving those things are because I've never tried it. But this is just my method for now. And, you know, another trick is um, the one reason that there's no seams showing in this, and there, even when I did a 4x2 of this, which you might have seen in Jose's video, that was a 30 by 20 That had eight panels on it. You still couldn't see any seams. And one reason is because there's a lot going on in this photo. There's a lot of stuff in here. If it was blue sky or it had a big area of one solid color, you can see seams better uh, when that happens. And one thing you can do to cover those up is, let me go get my colored pencils. Okay, here's the colored pencils. This was 20 bucks on Amazon. I just, uh, you know, ordered this on Amazon. It comes in this little case right here. So let's see these. Uh, these are more. These flamingos are print out a little bit more orange than pink. Um, but 
if you do print a, a print that is not as busy as this and you can see the, the seam on it, what you can do is after you've taped it like this, you can, I, I've picked the color of pretty close to the, the flamingo here in my colored pencil. And if you, if you want to fill in like a little area like that, you can bend this outward like this so that the white area of the, the uh, paper shows because that's what's typically showing when you have a seam. You can look to see where, where the flamingo was. Like we got a, a little piece of the flamingo here. You can take this and, and just rub this along the edge here to get a little bit of that color there. Because again, what is showing when, when you have a seam is typically the thickness of the paper and a little bit of a white line. Like if I bend this enough, you can probably see a little bit of a white line here. Now I might make a green color here and let's see. Yeah, here's a green. Um, if I could see this as a white line, see, you can't really see it when it's closed, but if you could see this as a white line, you could go like this and then just, you know, take the, the colored pencil and run the colored pencil over the edge of the paper to get rid of some of that white so that you have green showing here instead of white. And then when you put this back, you can see even, even when it's not all the way folded, this has kind of made that seam disappear a little bit. And it takes a little bit of work, but that's one method that you can use to make the seams melt away. If your uh, seams are showing because you might have a uh, print that's, like I said, one more uniform color, um, like a, a blue sky or you know, a walkway or a white wall or something like that. A uh, white wall probably wouldn't show much because the paper's white, but you get the idea. Um, if you have a, a colored wall or something like that and it's pretty much one shade, the seams tend to show a little bit on that. So you might have to use the colored pencil trick. So that's what I've found so far. Um, feel free to share any ideas or methods that you might be using. Um, because, you know, this is just what I found from like a week's or a week and a half worth of working with these posters and trying to put them together optimally. The first one that I did wasn't so great and then they started getting better and then they're, they're pretty much like this where you don't really even see a seam anymore now. Um, unless, you know, you got that solid color issue. So hopefully these tips help and you can get started on making these large posters out of multi-panel prints. Um, obviously, the, the multi-panel feature is not limited to just posters like this. You don't have to print posters and put them together continuously like this. You might have a window that you're putting panels in, and there might be a gap in between them. And QImage has a gap available, and you can even do an overlap if you wanted. Um, but I don't recommend using an overlap if you're putting things together like this, just because you're going to have to cut very very close to the edge no matter what you do so you might as well print it exactly the size that you want it and when you print off that tiny little sliver it's not noticeable it's only like a few pixels in here uh, if you had an overlap let's say you're trying to cut a quarter of an inch off well you still have to measure exactly a quarter of an inch so you might as well just print them the exact size you want when you're doing this and just cut that tiny little sliver off because you're going to be as accurate as you would with an overlap trying to eyeball exactly a quarter of an inch. So, you know, kind of six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. So good luck with making your posters. Post comments below if you find uh, better ways to do this. Um, I typically find that, you know, we have a lot of uh, people using the feature, so other people may come up with better ideas than I have. So this is just to get you started and what has worked for me. So. Hope it helps and thanks for watching.